Next, we have Elizabeth McCuller, who's a freshman here at the college at Brockport. She's from St. Louis via Rochester. Liz is one of those bright, engaging people you meet along your path of life. And the first time we met, I asked her a question. I said, you related to Jim McCuller? And she stops and looks at me funny and says, James McCuller was my grandfather. He died when I was very young. Jim McCuller was Rochester's, one of, one of the top civil rights leaders here in Rochester. He was very prominent with FIGHT, which was the anti-poverty program founded in the late 60s in Rochester. He was also the founder and director of the Rochester Black Media Coalition. And for anybody in the media, James McCuller was a force to be reckoned with. Well, those are big shoes and you fill them quite well. <laughs> Every morning, Liz would come to class singing. <laughs> there was a protest song that we played in class, What Side Are You On? It came from the labor movement, was labor, later uh, adapted for the uh, civil rights movement, and Liz would come in, What Side Are You On, boy? What Side Are You On? Always brightened up for the day. Uh, I think it's fair to say also that Liz was very touched by our Memphis experience. Uh, she's going to be relaying her feelings about the people we met. Good evening, everyone. Well, good morning, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this photo in particular um, was our photo taken um, prior to our departure. Um, we are very sad in that Carolyn was not there that day to be in the photo, but there are many more photos um, that she is in covering her face. Um, this picture right here, um, this is Mr. Willie Earl Bates. He um, is the owner of Four Way Restaurant, um, a very iconic mom and pop joint, not only for their VIP, which is a drink mixture of some sort, it's absolutely delicious, um, but for it being Martin Luther King's favorite place to go eat. Um, this photo right here from the left, Co-Pastor Watkins, and the center is Reverend Dr. Netters and Reverend McKinney. Um, a few points on each individual. Co-Pastor Watkins, the co-pastor of Mount Vernon Baptist Church. Um, Dr. Netter's in the middle. He is very, very close friends with Martin Luther King. He not only supported the civil rights movement, but he marched with Martin Luther King himself. Reverend McKinney is the reverend at Mount Vernon Baptist Church and helped us get into a lot of places um, during our stay. This young lady is Miss Hattie Thompson. She, in particular, attended Martin Luther King's last speech held at Mason Temple. Um, she delivered her experience um, about that day and the movement itself during a brief interview conducted by our own Mike Netting. Um, this is our AmeriCorps and VISTA volunteer dinner. This is a photo, family photo that we took. Um, we had this meeting pretty much because AmeriCorps and the VISTA volunteers pretty much do what we did. They travel, serve, and they learn. And um, they came to share their experience with us as well as offer us advice for better travel, serve, and learn stuff to come. This is Co-Pastor Watkins. He is not Co-Pastor Watkins, excuse me. Co-Pastor Watkins must be thinking about me. Um, this is Minister Westbrook. Um, minister Westbrook is a youth minister that delivered the sermon um, the Sunday um, we attended at Mount Vernon Baptist Church. Um, very awesome sermon. You guys should get yourselves a copy. This is Mary, um, a young lady we met our last night at the Pilgrim House. Um, this, she's a very interesting character, very loving. Um, this young lady, she didn't have a place to stay. So we, she braided me and Katie's hair, awesome braids, does a great job. Um, and so we decided to purchase her a few nights at the Pilgrim House and Katie and Amy um, brought her a few necessities. Um, I th Mary herself like changed me a lot because it's so easy to be in a position such as herself. And people, it takes, I feel like it takes people like us to go to Memphis and help other people to bring the experience back to Rochester and better our own home. This is Ninka. Ninka, she's a very interesting individual herself also. She is a young lady from um, Amsterdam, if I'm not 
correct? Um, and she's traveling for six months. Um, we met her in Memphis at the Pilgrim's House. We went to the cafe. Um, she helped us in the cemetery. And she's even visited Brockport. Isn't that awesome? She visited Brockport. This is Terry, <laughs> Mr. Terry Miller, and Miss Terry Miller. And there's Ellsworth chilling with them. Um, Terry was our driver. He was an a, a very amazing individual himself. I got the um, opportunity to be left at the Pilgrim House, and he came back and got me. Um, <laughs> he took us everywhere, um, <laughs> offered us advice. <laughs> Um, and he even told Katie and Amy not to go to a certain place, and he, he was right. So, <laughs> um, Terry, awesome person. His wife is awesome, also. This right here is Miss Pat. Miss Pat is our adopted mother in the South. If it wasn't for Miss Pat, this trip would not have happened. She helped with the connection between Memphis and Brockport, and she was an amazing individual. She would be everybody's mom in here if she could, but I made them make a pact, so they can't. Um, everybody that you saw in this picture and everybody sitting before us, and even the people that you don't see or online, everybody that's watching, all played a great role in our experience in Memphis. Um, we brought back experience to be able to share with you guys and they have experience from us being there themselves. Um, we definitely look forward to going there again. So be on the lookout for us, Memphis. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Next, we're going to hear from David Babb. David is a freshman who grew up in Brooklyn. He was born in Jamaica, where he still has family. Multi-talented individual. He's a studio art major, communication studies minor, recent talent contest award winner. You didn't know that, right? OK. He's active and well-known on campus in a very, very short time uh, with Brockport student government, including the elections committee. So he's had a busy week. And he's a member of the advisory committee that's working on the planning for Brockport Center for Engaged Students. Uh, he's a newly named resident assistant. Uh, the common comment I hear from other faculty is, he's only a freshman, <laughs> which is a very high praise. And after Brockport, he wants to work in education uh, with a long-term goal of helping needy students by starting a new urban charter school. David Babb. Good afternoon. Um, I'm supposed to be speaking about the emotional impact of the places that we went to. Um, I will start with the Zion Cemetery, which is our, our goal. Um, the Zion Cemetery, as you heard before, is basically a national landmark, and it is the home to over 23,000 graves. The Zion Cemetery holds a dear place in all of our hearts now because when we went there, we all looked at the cemetery, and we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into. And now we're all so attached to it. I think that everybody in this group has plans to go back to Memphis. I even know that a couple people applied for jobs in Memphis um, just because they want to go back. It's, it's like we all got so close to it. Everybody wants to go back and do something to help out the city of Memphis and also to work in the cemetery. The, main, the major thing for the cemetery project was the Henderson Project, which Carolyn spoke about. Um, the Henderson Project was a major thing for the entire group. It was like that night after we found the Henderson Project, it was like bubbling excitement. Everybody just wanted to go home and do research and find out what was, so, what was going on. And that was a great part of the trip. The next part was the Mount Vernon Westwood Baptist Church. Um, that's actually our second home away from Brockport. You can call that our, our university in Memphis, basically. They adopted us as Brockport students. We were, what is it, 12, 13 of us? 12 strangers that just went to Memphis. They didn't know who we were, but they adopted us. 12 perfect strangers. They didn't know if we were coming there to do <laughs> random things, but they adopted us. 
And just the, that, that all goes back to the Southern hospitality. These people didn't know who we were, and we just went there, and they took us around the city of Memphis, took us where we needed to be, and they made sure that we were okay throughout our entire stay. The uh, next place after that is the Lorraine Motel. Many of you know the Lorraine Motel as the place where Dr. Martin Luther King was shot and killed. And um, that's, we actually went to go there. It's now the um, Civil Rights Museum. Sorry, skip my head. It's now the Civil Rights Museum. And that's also somewhere that we, we all enjoyed because we got to walk into the room and got, we were like a, um, like a step away from where he was actually shot and killed. Um, another unique thing about that is that we also saw a nice lady outside protesting. And uh, w it was unique to us because we didn't know why somebody would be protesting the Civil Rights Museum, but we found out later on that she actually lived in the Lorraine, Lorraine Motel and she was kicked out um, because it became the Civil Rights Museum. So she's been protesting there day and night ever since. Um, I'm not going to get to talk about everything, but the, the next place was the four-way restaurant, and uh, they treated us like VIPs. Um, the four-way restaurant is, was one of the only places that black African Americans were able to eat in the city of Memphis, and that's where doc Dr. Martin Luther King did eat when he was in the city of Memphis. And last place is the Mason Temple. We got a VIP tour through the Mason Temple. It's not something that anybody can just get to go and do, but uh, um, our prof a professor from Rhodes, in Rhodes University, um, Rhodes College, Russ Wigington, was able to take us into the Mason Temple, and we got a, a strict VIP tour, and we, we actually got to stand on the pulpit that Dr. Martin Luther King made his famous I've Been to the Mountaintop speech. Um, that's basically everything overall. The city of Memphis is a phenomenal place, and it has a lot of history and attractions and very caring people. That's it.